Hello, in this video I'm going to be uh, talking about big clips, the basic of bit basics of big clips, uh, basically what they are, um, how the uh, general movement mechanics, and direction changes, the mechanics of all those, basically information on how to do big clips uh, in depth, somewhat in depth, so I don't have to go over it in depth in every setup tutorial. So starting out, just what a big clip is. In the most simple terms, a bit clips is just basically there's a hole, a tiny, tiny, tiny hole in the ground uh, that you can sometimes uh, beak bust straight into, and that's how we get into some levels early. Some people will get mad at that terrible explanation, but if you want to read more about it, know why it works, how it works, and all that stuff, there's a link in the description below that explains it all in depth. So, bit clips. If you look at my, if you look at my X, Y, and Z position right there. See how there's a lot of decimal places? If even one of those decimal places is off, then the bit clip won't work. That's how precise it is. Uh, if one of those decimal places are off, then the whole trick just won't work. Which means that we have to have a series of consistent movements in order to get to our bit clip position. Uh, so then, so now I'll talk about movement positions, movement mechanics, and consistent movements. But first, starting out. For every big clip, you have to have a consistent starting position. For MMMM early, it would just be this loading zone. For most big clips, it would be a loading zone. For some, it would be others. You'll see. But this big clip, this loading zone takes us to a consistent spot every time. So you have 300 flat, 6,494 flat. It puts us there exact that it puts us to that exact location every time. So then from there, we do a series of consistent positions to get all the way to around here. And then we can just big clip straight to the ground. So about big clip movements, if you want to get to like the other side of that of that of the stairs there, I can try and get into talent trot, jump across, and let's look at my, the last three digits of my X position. It's 707. Let's say I try that again. Into talent trot, jump here. Whoops. I'll try that again since that was a bad attempt. 487. That's a completely different number. Uh, so you can't just move the joysticks in any direction you want, in talent shot or without talent shot. It's not going to work like that, You're, because it's just not precise enough. We do have ways of having precise, uh, consistent movements. The first one is by doing punch, uh, bear punches. So that's my starting position now, 109. If I do a bear punch, it puts me at 589, 598. If I snap back to my position, 109, just do a bear punch. And I still get the same result, 598. Uh, if you notice Banjo, uh, if you notice the numbers don't stop like changing, even after it seems that Banjo is still, that's because there's just a tiny bit, of, there's just a, a bit of micro like movements Banjo is making, even after he looks like he's standing still, even after it looks like he's done his bear punch. Our way of telling if Banjo's completely still is just by looking at his animation. After he bear punches, he's gonna look to the right then to the left, then back forward. Once he moves his head fully to his right for the first time, that's when Banjo's fully stopped moving after a bear punch. And then that's when you can continue on with the next steps in your setup. Uh, with a bear punch, you can actually hold Z at the end, and you'll move a tiny bit extra distance. Uh, there is a con about this though, it just takes a lot longer for Banjo to stop moving. Uh, but it is consistent, and it moves you a tiny bit further. So like, it's like almost until Banjo peeks up his nose and looks left and right. That's actually not used in any current setups, but it's just good to know. Uh, another way of movement is by beak barging. So we can just hold Z and tap B, and as long as he let go of B before Kazooie starts moving, it'll be consistent. So the last three numbers of the X position is 879. Let's do that again, and it's 879. The same rule applies about Banjo's position not stopping right away. Once he looks to his right fully, that's when you know Banjo's actually stopped moving. So you can do short beak barges or you can hold B the entire way and that'll be consistent as well. So 512, let's do that again. 512, right there, yeah. You can also hold Z at the end of beak barges as well. Whoops, that's not a beak barge. And you'll go a tiny bit further. Same thing as bear punches. But again, it has the same con where it takes longer for you to stop moving. And yeah, it's not used in any current setups. So yeah, that's just good to know. For beak barges, you can either only tap B or you can hold B. 
You can't go anywhere in between. As soon as you introduce a variable that depends on how long you hold a button, then it's just not going to be consistent at all. So, yeah. That's uh, the majority of our movements for short distances, like about this length or so. We can go even shorter, though, with our with our movement, with our consistent movements. When we get closer to our big clip spots, we're going to be like units away, and we want to inch ourselves towards it. Uh, it's, and that's hard to do with just... Uh, with just peak barges and punches, because even those move quite a bit. Our shortest form of consistent movement is by doing what we call punch cancels, where we punch, do a bear punch, and then after one frame of movement, we jump. Just like that. Now that sounds hard, but it's actually not as difficult as it sounds. Uh, basically, you can just slide your thumb from B to A as fast as you can, and usually you'll either just get the bear punch cancel, uh, or you'll just do a stationary jump. You'll rarely ever uh, jump too late if you just move your thumb from B to A as fast as you can. Uh, one issue with bear punch cancels is that it's hard to tell if you got it. It's hard to tell if you did a stationary jump or if you actually got the punch cancel. So if you look at Banjo, it's kind of hard to tell if just by looking at him if you got the punch cancel or not. Uh, so our way of doing this is by looking at the background. So if I just do a stationary jump, just like this, the background doesn't change at all. If you're just doing a stationary jump, the camera has no reason to change. If you do a big jump, the camera changes a tiny bit. So don't do a big jump, don't do a big jump. But if you just do a small jump, the camera won't change at all. But if you move, the second you start moving, the second the camera starts moving. So if we look at the background, when we get a bear punch cancel, everything in the background will shift a tiny, tiny bit. And then that little shift in the background will let us know if we got the punch cancel or not. That's generally what you want to do to tell if you if you can if you got bear punch cancels. Uh, for some setups, there'll be more specific cues to tell you whether you got punch cancels, but in general, you'll just be looking at the background. And yeah, uh, that's about it for short distance movement. There's one more form of movement to talk about though, uh, long form movement. So as I mentioned before, you have to start from a consistent spot. For MMMM early, it would be that loading zone. And to go from that loading zone all the way to here where we do our clip, it's going to take a long time with just bear punches and beak barges. So our way of doing that is with Talent Shot. Now I know I said you can't just use Talent Shot moving your joystick easily. That's true, you can't do it easily. We have our ways. Um, first of all, it's good to know that you can't move your joystick at all uh, when you're doing Talent Shot movement. Because that's just not going to work. And you can't jump at all either, because jumping will change your acceleration depending on the slopes you're on, the, the formation of the ground. It'll put you at different speeds, which changes your distances, your, your positions very, very slightly, which will just ruin the entire trick. So that's one thing we have to know about Talent Trot. We can only get into Talent Trot, then hold one direction on the joystick for the entire time. Uh, however, when we get into Talent Trot, our actual thumb will be moving from like the neutral position to like a cardinal direction to like a notch at a different speed like in physical real time so that's a variable that that's like not fixed it's a variable that that depends on our human self that has human error in it so our way of doing that is by buffering an input so if you look at look at my numbers look at my positions right now x y and z just take note of them now look at what I do on my joystick while I get into Talent Trot. I did a lot of joystick movements while I got into Talent Trot, but my positions didn't change at all. That means that um, Banjo is stationary, completely stationary, while he's getting into Talent Trot. So you can do whatever you want during that. Um, this means that we can buffer an input on our joystick while we're getting into Talent Trot. So then once we have control of Banjo, we're holding a direction fully in a consistent position. Uh, let me turn on my input display here real quick. If you notice the numbers, that indicates like uh, where your joystick is registered. Generally, the max on the notches is like 70 something. So there is a bit of leniency there. Uh, so it doesn't have to be in the exact exact same spot every time, as long as you're holding it full in the notch. So anyways, um, what we do is... We start from a consistent position, buffer an input while we get into Talent Trot, 
So I'll do that for um, here. Buffer and input while we get into Talent Trot. And then once we do that, every frame we move in Talent Trot will be consistent. As long as we start from the same spot. Every position on every frame will be exactly consistent. So what we do is we just find a frame that we want to stop on and then we pause on it. So here I'll buffer up. Okay. But then you pause when you get the frame that you want. So this is a pause that that's for the first setup in MMM early. Um, there will be visual cues to tell you when to pause, visual cues and audio cues. So don't worry about that for now. But in general, what you're going to do is you're going to pause at a specific frame, let go of all your inputs, then unpause, and then you'll be in a consistent spot ready to do your setup. Uh, one thing to note though is that for big clips that use this talent shot uh, movement, there will likely be more than one setups. So there will likely be more than one frames that you can pause on, simply because of the fact that if there was just only one frame that you can pause on, then that's just that's just really difficult, because then they'll be frame perfect. Whereas if you have two frames to pause on, one earlier and one later, then you have a two frame window. And if you have three frames, then you have a three frame, frame window. It'll ju it just means that you'll have to memorize a different setup afterwards, depending on which frame you paused it on. Yeah, that's about it for just basic movements that we use. The next thing I want to talk about is angles and direction changes. So you can't just move up and down when going for big clips. You have to move side to side as well, up and down, side to side, and a lot of more precise angles. The simplest way and the easiest way of making big angle changes is by uh, just changing the joystick while you're crouching. To do this, you have to make sure your camera is, is still, is stationary. If it's moving, it's not going to work. Uh, so if we look at my facing angle and movement angle, if even one of those decimal places is off, then it's the same thing. It's just not going to work. But it's not that difficult to just move your joystick straight to the right uh, to get a consistent angle. So right there is 89, uh, 450. If I wait for the camera to stop moving, then try it again. 89, 450. You can do that pretty easily with up, down, left, or right, as long as your camera is stationary before you attempt it. And doing that will allow you to prep positions for beak barges, backflips, and other stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, one easier way that people like to try and do this is instead of just switching the angle on your joystick as, as precisely as you can, you like to press start, then hold the angle on the joystick, then unpause, then you'll be facing that angle. That's just an easier way of doing it. So yeah, that's how you change cardinal directions properly. Uh, but you can't just use cardinal directions up, down, left, and right for the entire big clip setup because that's just not going to cut it. Uh, what we're gonna, what we like to do instead is we like to get into first person, and then when we move in first person, Banjo actually changes his direction. So we use that uh, to get more precise angles. So we get into first person, we move left or right, we find an angle that we want, get onto that angle, get out of first person, and do our movements. However, it's not that simple, obviously. Just like in Talent Trot, there's a human variable where uh, if you started to move your joystick after you have control, then it'll be inconsistent. So what we do is the same thing as Talent Trot, where we buffer an input on our joystick while we get into first person. You can buffer the input while you get into first person or while you're on a pause screen. Either will work just fine. Um, for these, what we call twirly whirlies, we buffer left or right. Uh, oops, that's not the right button. You can go left or right. And then if you notice, um, all the decimal places in my moving angle doesn't change when I buffer the input. That's how you know it's consistent. So for every frame that you're moving, the, uh, you're gonna turn around, you're gonna turn by three degrees. There's 360 degrees in a total full rotation, and every frame you're turning three degrees, which is a good pattern. Um, because now what we can do is just, uh, look for a visual cue to pause on. So say, like, when that building goes completely off screen, pause, and hopefully we'll get the frame that we want. And you'll learn all the visual cues in the setup to, in the tutorial videos later on. But anyways, um, 
There's, that's not the, all there is to it. So, say you have a pause right here. So say you just fail it, because it is frame perfect. You want to get an exact degree, an exact angle. Say you fail it. What you can do is you can go all the way around to the right and attempt it again. Or if your pause requires you to move left initially, then you can do that as well. You can pause to the left. However, if you fail it when you're turning to the left, you can't do a full rotation. You can't do a full rotation to the left because in most places, if you do a full rotation to the left, the angle will change just by a little bit, and that'll ruin everything. It doesn't happen when you're doing full rotations to the right, though. Uh, in most places, though, not all places. This place where I am exactly, in particular, for MMM early, you can do full rotations to the left, but still not preferred. So I was saying, you can do a full rotation to the right if you fail it, but you actually don't want to do that. The only reason you don't want to do that is because it's slow. The full rotation is just slow. What you can do instead is, while you're on the pause screen after you fail it, you can hold the opposite direction on your joystick. Pause again after you move a bit. Hold the opposite direction on your joystick again. Then go back to reattempt it. And then you keep doing that until you get your pause. And it's okay to just go left in general, just as long as you don't make a full rotation. So yeah, that's something that's good to know. Uh, another thing I want to mention is lag frames, the possibility of lag frames. Um, so lag frames can happen if you're facing a very laggy uh, area in the loading zone or if you get a grunty text or for some other spontaneous reasons. What a lag frame does is, so you know how I mentioned that the, the, the you turn at three degrees every single frame? So that puts us on a pattern. That puts us on a pattern where our angle is going to be on a specific pattern that's a multiple of three or whatever. What a lag frame does is it adds 1.5 degrees to that pattern. So it's going to throw it off completely. Uh, and then your visual cues won't work. Thankfully for us, 1.5 is exactly half of three degrees, which means that if we get another lag frame, we'll revert back to our original pattern and we can continue on. Our way of trying to get another lag frame is by the exact same way that we try to avoid it, where we just try to pause, we, where we try to face um, a very laggy area in the loading zone and we try to do a full pause. So for MMM early, it would be this door. We do a full pause here and continue, and we just hope that we'd get a lag frame. There's no go good way of telling if you got a lag frame, uh, other than just knowing what the pause screens look like around the pause that you're looking for. Sometimes they'll just look a bit off and you should be able to tell. But most but most cases, lag frames are pretty rare. So yeah, that's most of it. One more smaller detail I want to mention. So say you have, say you're in this position before you do Twirly Whirly. This is specifically for one of the setups in MMM Early. If you have a pause um, right when, uh, like very soon after you get into first person, then it's going to look a bit different compared to if you're reattempting it. Compared to if you're like pausing at full speed, pausing after you've moved for a tiny bit. So for example, this frame right here, if you look at the green Jinjo, its ears are, one is like on that grave and one is like beside it. If I unpause, the angle is 333. Now, um, I'm gonna go back. Now I'm gonna do get that same pause, that same angle, just with a little more setup before it. So right there. So the Jinjo's ears are both on the gravestone this time, but it's the exact same angle. So basically what this means is that while you're turning, the camera has to accelerate before it can move at its constant max speed. So if your pause occurs shortly after the camera is accelerating, then it'll give you a slightly different pause screen compared to compared to if your camera's already fully accelerated. Basically, the camera fully uh, the camera takes a bit of time to accelerate, but Banjo's actual facing position, like how Banjo moves like this, he's already moving at his full speed right away. So that's why the frames, the, the pause frames might look a tiny bit different. That's just the last thing. Uh, in the setup tutorials and stuff, 
you'll uh you'll learn what each of the frames look like and what to look for and all that stuff. But yeah, that's just about it for all these all these bit clips, uh, all this bit clip basic information. Uh, there's more information that you can learn in the link in the description below. There's a link to the Banjo Speedrun website. Uh, a link about BK bit clips. On that page, it tells you all the information about what a bit clip is, how it works. It tells you all the movement mechanics and angle mechanics that I explained right here, uh, more in depth, and it gives you every single coordinate, like for every single position, for like every single step in every single bit clip setup. So that website, that page will be one of your best friends while learning uh, bit clips. It'll just give you all the information you need, and hopefully you'll be able to get it down. Bit clips in general aren't actually that hard. They just take a lot, a lot of learning and memorizing. So yeah, uh, hopefully this video helps. Please read through the Banjo Speedruns page about bit clips and bit clip uh, mechanics. And then you can look at the tutorial setups and then it'll all make sense. And hopefully you'll be able to get it. I'll see you later.